welcome to the SourceCred Guild Report of November 2022. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. So we got some topics that we're going to talk through today. Pretty much the same format as last month. So let's just go ahead and get right into it. If you want to follow along, um, all of our public events, they're on our calendar. Oh, I'm not sharing my screen. Thank you very much. There we go. OK, yeah. So we're here. And now we're here at the calendar. So yeah, check out the calendar. And you can follow along all of our events. And you can also find the recordings there as well if you are looking for one in particular. So that is, wait, that's last month. Sorry, oops. Uh, let me just quickly fix this. This should be November. I don't know. I must have just accidentally not updated this slide. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> so follow along. Um, last month, we had a lot of great comments in the agenda. And so now we have a new agenda for this month. Uh, a little bit later in the slides, I do a very quick recap of what we spoke about last month and probably carry that discussion forward a little bit. But I think that these agenda issues um, are, oh yeah, they're getting posted to YouTube. Yeah, thank you, Ivan. I just noticed that as well. So I, I forgot to add a, a link to that in the presentation. But if you go to Scurf's YouTube channel, you can find it pretty readily. What I was going to say, though, about the agenda items is that I've linked, I've been linking them so you can kind of go back in history if you want to sort of follow along on GitHub. OK, so here is the overview slide, Paul, that I like to kind of hand off to you for the elevator pitch. Sure. Uh, so those in the meeting have probably heard this pitch many times. But for those of you watching at home on YouTube, uh, SourceCred or SCURF's implementation of SourceCred is our ongoing experiment in how we can use a tool, which is SourceCred, an open source tool uh, that does a algorithmic ranking of participation and value addition to um, discussion, particularly on our forum. It's the one place where we have uh, this implemented. Uh, and this guild is a guild that uh, is formed to govern what happens there and kind of pay attention to how this experiment is going for SCURF and is it uh, rewarding and recognizing the type of behavior that we like, which is high value contributions, uh, moving conversations forward, surfacing new types of questions or uh, solving types of problems. Uh, and is it doing it in a way uh, that we think is uh, of value? And also we are using this as a way to do a small distribution of die based on um, percent of uh, cred uh, that one generates on our forum. So it is a simultaneous is the uh, experiment working when it comes to like the parameters that we've set up source cred to do uh, is it uh, identifying the type of value that we'd like to be generated. And then also are we properly incentivizing slash rewarding that type of value um, in our community. And so there's my little pitch uh, for source cred at this time. Okay, cool. Let's continue on. If you would like to kind of get the download of everything uh, official for SCURF and SourceCred, this is the URL to follow. It will take you to our GitHub repository where we have uh, more information and also where we maintain our monthly cred percent scores if you want to look at the history of that. We've uh, very slightly changed the opt-in process in that we've just moved the location of the SourceCred opt-in channel inside of our Discord server. It should be now at the very top underneath the welcome screen. Once you find that channel, it's a two-step process. First thing you need to do is fill out the Google form so that we can get your wallet and your username. And then after that, you just have to um, monthly sign in to the reaction role, which is the little red ticket there um, for the monthly opt-in. So the form you have to fill out once, and then every month, you need to opt in to continue to receive payment. And we have some short URLs uh, for that on screen. Uh, so let's quickly talk about October's recap. 
uh, and this meeting in a general sense. It occurs on the second Friday of every month at 1 p.m. Pacific time. And we all just, it's an open meeting where the community gets together to discuss matters on a month to month basis and the action items that are associated with it. Uh, let's begin by talking about the die calculation for last month. There weren't any changes. We last month continued as normal. And some of the topics of discussion that we had were around marketing and recruitment, uh, ideas around gaming the system, starting to do some data analysis on the results that we've had, and different ways that we can do payouts on different types of timescales. Uh, a little bit later, I have a slide where we kind of recap that in more focus during the open discussion. Um, so we'll touch on that again. But first, I'd like to actually talk about a clerical error that was surfaced and has been addressed with this month's payout. We had a community member uh, who reached out to me directly who was contributing, but noticed that uh, their source cred score didn't seem to be going up on the monthly reports. Sure enough, I looked more closely, and this contributor was contributing and was earning source cred. It's just that the way that na uh, usernames get converted between discourse and source cred was causing, in very few edge cases, to cause a mismatch, um, and I was missing the result. So now there's a more robust way where uh, um, I do substring searches when there isn't a result, make sure that it's more thorough. And I was able to actually run that back through the entire history of our payouts. And I found every occurrence where such a problem occurred, not only for that user who reported it, but actually four other users in total. And uh, we underpaid a total of 900 die um, from the beginning of time up until just last month. So hopefully that won't happen again. I don't, um, it was a very interesting thing to uncover. And I appreciate uh, Adara, if you hear this, thank you for chiming in. You saved yourself some, you know, some money, but not only that, you you helped out some other people in our community as well. So, again, I appreciate you for letting us know. And uh, as also the way that we were able to do the payback this month is that we we use the flexible return pool, um, and in this way, we're to minimize the amount of funds that would be otherwise going to contributors. So, in this in this approach, we were able to kind of combine the ramifications of that repayment to draw out of the return pool that goes to people who are not contributors. So in other words, the people who are just sort of getting a, a little bit of die just to sign up are getting a little bit less die. And by doing that, we're able to then repay the folks who were contributors in the past that were underpaid. And I'll show this in more detail on the uh, breakout of the payment. Uh, but first, some stats. So again, we're doing a 5,000 die monthly distribution. Our participation has increased again this month to a 58 people. Uh, and here we'll see a much bigger difference in the claimed and unclaimed die. This is because as I've bolded, the overpay return was deducted from the unclaimed return die pool. Uh, and so that shifted the payout landscape just a little bit. Uh, I was able to get the die slippage again to negative four, so that's good. And um, you know some of the other interesting um, numbers, I think, is that the total percent cred is still staying pretty high at, compared to previous months. It is seem seem to be rising. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and jump to the kind of the flow of how die was spread out. So here you can see the big differences in the return, uh, the overpay return, which got forked out of the unclaimed die. So this time, the unclaimed die pool got split basically three ways, um, one to the overturn, overpay return, one to the return pool, and another to the contributor's return pool. And as you can see, uh, the way that the cred flows, that the return pool here at 645 die is significantly less. Or ordinarily, these two return pools would be even, that they would ordinarily be both 1,500. So if you follow it upstream, the uh, contributors are earning a little bit less from the return pool, but they're still maintaining the same level that they would get. Uh, the contributors' return pool is unaffected here. And also, the cred percent is also unaffected. So it's a very minimal uh, change for contributors, but quite noticeable for non-contributors. Um, so this month, non-contributors are only getting 12 die. And as, a and as a point of discussion I would like to raise is, like, at what point does a um, you know, 12 or 15 or 20 die become like something that we might take away from just signing up and distribute that in other ways. Uh, this is kind of 
also the whole point of having this flexible um, portion of our pool is because we haven't had a better reason to use it really. And this is kind of the first example of us having a good reason to use the flexible pool for an event, in this case, a clerical error. OK. Um, oh, and that's just as, and as the last mention, it also, we want to just um, say that we value the contributors, and we want to have solutions that maintain that value and maintain their uh, payout. Uh, yeah, Chris, please. On that note, um, I think, especially in the context of the organization having to had cut funding to certain things i think it wouldn't be uh out of line to limit the payouts to only contributors and then um have the return pool weighted towards most recent contributors in the last two weeks um in that yeah if this is meant to encourage participation paying people continuously paying people not to participate is actually going against our own efforts uh, ironically so I think that's where uh, this this would be a good time to sort of transition to not paying people to not participate. <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of nodding, including myself. So <laughs> I would that would be awesome if you could just take that comment to the uh, to the GitHub notes so that it uh, that's a, that'll be a, a nice item to keep on the record. Um, any other thoughts on that before I move to the next slide? Plus run from Paul. Cool. Uh, back in August, I did a skill sprint, basically showing how kind of to, how I run the source cred algorithm. Um, it isn't. It wasn't a complete overview of all the steps that we take to calculate the eventual die payout. And the part that I sort of omitted was actually diving into the spreadsheet and kind of showing all the things I do within the spreadsheet. And for example, for this month's payout with a different model, I had to actually kind of redo a little bit in order for it to make sense with this underpay concept. So it continues to evolve. And it would be nice to have somebody, you know, this is sort of an open call, I suppose. If anybody likes spreadsheet stuff and would like to see me do a part two skill sprint where it's really all about the spreadsheet and how that goes, I think I could probably do it within the format of a sprint of a skill sprint, which is like supposed to be, you know, 15 ish minutes or whatever. Um, but it might even be something that I could do e even on a longer format um, with somebody. Uh, yeah, Paul. So related to this, and I, excuse me if I missed it in the agenda or not, but I think another thing that you and I have kind of talked about is um, having maybe a set of skill sprints. Uh, so that one would be able to, so if a member of our community wanted to kind of do an audit of the, um, like how we have done source credit in the past, uh, that they would have all of the ability to do that. Here, here's, if you'd like to do an audit of it, here's the steps that you can do. Uh, here's how you, you run the instance. Here's how the spreadsheet works and things like that. Um, is this building towards that effort um, or is or are they still kind of just like floating around as kind of independent um, skill sprints right now? Well, as far as skill sprints oriented towards source cred, the, it's kind of all up in the air. And so it certainly could be. And I think that's an interesting idea. And absolutely, it was something I was hoping to achieve with the skill sprint idea is to have a kind of a season of skill sprint or a a package of skill sprints that have a related theme or purpose and you just described a really great one so you know certainly in that in that sense that this being a part two and maybe a part three and maybe a part four as we continue to move forward does make a lot of sense so yeah so i'll, I'll try to uh it sounds like it's probably a good idea that we do another skill sprint. It's been a while since I've had a reason to do a skill sprint, and that sounds like a good one here. So, yeah, Chris. Just on that note, um, I do really think those are useful in that uh, not only is it good to have multiple people within the organization uh, capable of executing or understanding these things, I think it. Uh, adds a layer of integrity to the process when you are not actively 
making it impossible for other people to step into this role or help it's like they don't have to take over but even giving people the capacity to help i think gives a lot more integrity uh to the way that we're actually executing source cred and die payouts uh in a in a way that i think just un the fact that the skill sprints exist is going to alleviate a lot of people's worries about this type of uh structure Okay, great. Yeah, we'll definitely get it in. I mean, I don't see why not within November. So I'll, we'll do some marketing around it, and which is tangentially related to another thing that we've sort of been talking in the background, which is how do we get the word out about SourceGrid? And something like this, building content around it, also has the benefit of producing marketing materials and content for our team to send out. Yeah, actually, um this experiment could be framed as a new story to the right outlet where we just we've been working and we haven't been putting our narrative out mm. into the information uh sphere and i think that's where that's great it, it, in a lot of cases too many organizations are spending time putting information out and not actually working whereas we've been doing the opposite so this might be a, a really good time to sort of like and even down to the story of the person who went through the source cred payout or the source cred scores and figured out that they had not been paid out and the way that you then were able to use the system and find more people and then compensate them for their loss or what they would have perceived as loss i think that even in in its own situation becomes a narrative of how transparency and communication with the community uh allows this type of mistake to be remedied over time and i think that's where there was a person who came and was like i didn't sign up for the source cred last month can i get a payout and it was like no but a person who had signed up and done their due diligence, but the system made a mistake, then can come in and show that they did all the things possible. And the transparency on the other side allows us to then say, oh, yeah, we did make a mistake. Here's the remedy to that mistake. And I think even that alone is part of a narrative that we can construct to show how this experiment started, why we did this experiment, and why this would be useful to uh, encouraging participation in certain types of activities to build towards a certain culture while ensuring people then get compensated for quality interaction. I love it. Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree with that as well, Chris. Uh, and this is, so I think that there's, there's an opportunity here for us to kind of make a push um, when we originally were kind of thinking about the guild model, and one of the things that I'm excited about the guild model is this is a, an opportunity to kind of um, empower people to use agency within SCURF, right? So um, especially during a budget constrained period of time, like not everyone is uh, earning maybe as much as they would like to be earning and things along those lines. Uh, but we still have some opportunity to give people some agency uh, over what happens at SCURF and guilds are one of those ways. The source cred guild in particular um, is a really good, um, it's the vanguard of guilds uh, to some extent because it has its own treasury. Uh, it's kind of managed that treasury. Like one of the things that I know that we would like to do is um, have a multi-sig wallet so that this um, guild can be the one doing the payouts instead of it having to go all the way up. And that's something that I know we've talked about before. Um, but to that narrative point, um, I think that, that that also means that there's a responsibility on us to maybe start doing um, those kind of more public guild reports. So I think we did a pretty good job of maintaining um, an issue ticket history uh, in GitHub. 
but that's probably not as narratively nice to talk about. It's not as uh, open and accessible to interact with. Um, I don't know what a good frequency of a guild report would be. Uh, I'm just going to slip into common, like maybe quarterly guild report. I don't know. But some cadence, some reliable cadence, uh, where the guild talks about itself, what it's accomplished, what it'd like to do, things along those lines. And then that makes it easy for the discovery um, vertical to then pick that story up. Right? So it gives us as a guild uh, an opportunity to attract more members and also just let people know what's going on. Uh, but then also it makes it easier for Scriff to tell its own story uh, because it's a nice little chunk linkable thing that Discovery can talk about. So we'll kind of work on that quarterly thing. Uh, maybe the first step would be we were coming up to a year end. Right, so it would make sense to do that. Uh, maybe like a good template. I don't know um, if someone has like a good template of what they think a good guild report would have. Um, but if someone wants to start that doc and link it to the issue, that'd be great. I mean, we could even, I could even see this being spun into like a PPP or community call uh, with a formal presentation and so on. Um, so it could potentially be a bit of work. I'd be happy to help work on that though. I think I'd be a good candidate. Oh my to god! Together. So this makes me think we should really be pushing this experiment to social scientists and data analysts. Like they would love what we're doing in sense of like we're. I as someone who does primary research, I feel like this is one of the most ethical experiments of social engineering in tandem with uh positive reward that i mean i guess positive rewards type of social but it's not always a positive reward that is the motivating element and i think this is where uh being able to have done what we executed have a bunch of data and then in the process we have sort of a core guild that is seemingly dedicated to this project I, like so many people would love this having happened because it, it worked and i think the issue is like a lot of times it doesn't work and if we did a post-mortem on ourselves i would guess a lot of the things that made it work was the moderation but also like the continuous open communication. But I'm sure other other social scientists would love to come in and do research on us. So this is where I mean like we've done something and accomplished something that other people only theorize about. And in the process, we have the opportunity because there's going to be postdocs or docs, uh, like doctorate research grants to study something like this so instead of like assuming that we're going to eventually get funding for scurf's activities maybe this is the time we start like doing uh grant writing to get people to research us as part of our own subsidiary research in that there's a lot of social science and data science that's happening in real time that at the early stages it was theoretic theoretical but now we're we're way past theory well that that's an inspiring thought for sure and <laughs> uh and i actually would just like to kind of jump ahead here and say uh here we go uh so this whole idea of data analysis i mean really let's get to the point um <laughs> it all starts with the killed report yeah Exactly. So like how, how do we how do we extract meaning out of the data that we've been generating? I'm hearing that we need PhDs to come in here and figure that out. Um, that sounds great to me. I've also uh, I know that um, Seth, you mentioned a little bit about some existing tools that we might look at, and that would be awesome to fold in. So there's a couple of threads I think we can kind of follow along. Um, yeah, I'm definitely going to reach out to you offline on, on some of that. Um, and then again, the payout time scales. Uh, ideas around gaming the system, and then of course, driving marketing and recruitment to just 
make it go bigger or faster. Although I kind of like the speed it's at right now. Like I'm a little scared going faster, but. <laughs> so if there's anything on this list of topics that you know we want to dive, I feel like we've kind of organically touched on a lot of this uh, through through today's chats. But if there's anything in particular, you know, we'll keep it in mind for the open discussion. We can continue the conversation. But really quick, I just wanted to back up to the Gnosis concept. Like Paul said earlier, and this is something we brought up last month as well. We delayed it. Um, it's not really uh, stopping our progress, but like Paul said, we definitely do want to consider how we can transition into a situation where it's not just one person doing the audit, effectively myself, but to have people who need to sign off in order for that um, funding to be released. So I know that Paul and myself can be those two of those three, and we're kind of still on just have an open invitation to find a third person. So in the past, we'd also identified one, um, but we have somewhat lost them. So this is kind of mm -hmm. what I have in my mind as a maybe a, um, a trajectory. So mm. I think that by by January, I think it's feasible, like, like holidays, like, <clears throat> they're super disruptive to um, trying to roll things out. but. I think by January, the January disbursement, uh, so that would be in February when it's actually happening. Um, I'm going to propose to this group that we have a two, a two of three, Gnosis multi-sig. Um, I would be one. Brian would be one. Between now and then, hopefully, we will be able to find a volunteer who would be the third. Uh, but I think that as this experiment, because Brian and I are here, that like it will probably get um, audited and paid out um, relatively painlessly because I think that we've had a decent payout um, to this point. Then I think it might make sense to move to like a three of five uh, over time. And then to me, what would be fantastic is let's say third quarter 2023 that either Brian or I, and it kind of doesn't matter which, uh, but I think it would just be such an incredibly, it'd be a good milestone if one of us rolled off of and transitioned off of the multi-sig and someone else took one of our places. Uh, I, I think that'd just be cool for like a variety of reasons. But yeah, Chris, go ahead. Yeah, so I'm totally interested in being that third person in that I think this trajectory that you laid out makes it clear that it's not meant to be a permanent position for anyone so i have i don't have any uh inhibitions about that and especially in the context of putting it on a path to democracy um so that's like having something like that i think would make it even easier to start uh developing some sort of like grant proposal because we're already now we already have a committee like and those things could be the plan for quarter one or quarter two of next year that are, are in the grant proposal as to why we need the extra funds or, or whatever it becomes and it's like these things we've already tried these things are the plan this is what we think it could become in the future um and i the way you laid it out in in terms of having a plan that is short in scope, long in scope, and then the hope of unlimited capital in scope is something that would be very useful in uh, bringing in people to start funding this as a public good and, and, and seeing it as an investment in the space and not just like, uh, charity yeah so i would a very thankful for you to put your name up as the third on our initial two of three so if we had three of three every single time that'd be great too uh and i think this actually intersects and that this is the big thing that would potentially be worth exploring or it creates an opportunity to explore with like a guild report is i think right now this kind of structure intersects with some of the other conversations happening at scurf around reputation quests and badges like is there a way you know that um the source cred guild 
can be the leading guild when it comes to um, questing and using badging as a way to identify um, who might be on these multi-sigs in the future, um, what types of decision-making powers we might want people to do, like how can we use those badges, what does reputation mean internally, how is this helping people's reputation externally, right? Like, source cred guild has a treasury right that's a valuable skill for uh, a whole bunch of other industries that you've had to like manage some money now is this billions of dollars no but you've had to collaboratively manage some money like that's a valuable skill so how do we help people do that as well so uh, on the guild side i'm very excited about source cred as a guild kind of taking the lead of intersecting with those conversations that are already happening just like on the other side like i'm kind of interested in moderation um as well it's kind of taking the lead as kind of like an internal team that is potentially using quests and stuff like that so those to me are i'm biased those are our, our innovation pushers uh, when it comes to kind of community pathways into scurfing I think okay, we nice. should map all that out uh, in one map and in the context that obviously they both need more uh, detailed individual roadmaps, but those, the paid path and the unpaid path should be on the same visual map so people understand how they relate or don't relate to each other. Because uh, I've had people even within the uh, Pan-African Grants Program like, what's up with source cred? And I'm like, Hmm, how do I explain like where to start? It's like really actually difficult for them to understand where source credit even fits in because it's not really clear in relation to the rest of the organization because it's not there's no real central uh legend or map that that lays everything out visually. I do think that we have some decent documentation on like how we got to where we got, but I agree with you. Like we don't have a, like, I know that's a thing that we're actively working on as an org is making a roadmap and like where do all these paths converge and where do they like fork off from each other to go take care of their own special goals and stuff like that. So I know that it is in progress and it will be super helpful, but also it's like such an incredible lift uh, at the same time. So getting there, I. I'll go with we are getting there and I'm excited to make sure that source cred is part of that. Okay, let's see. What else do we have? Oh, well, yes, that takes us right to the end. <laughs> I'll just leave it here on the October topics. And uh, this is the open discussion phase, which we kind of have already been in, it seems like. So if there's any further open discussion that anybody may have on, their mind. If not, then we can take it async and continue to drive the conversation on GitHub. I'll, I'll say I definitely am going to start, uh, I, and I'll reach out to Brian about this, but in the context of the analytics, the uh, source cred data, uh, as well as the historical context of the forum activities. That is something that I do think uh, I will help like actively start to, to develop as its own narrative uh, document in that, as Paul said, we have documentation everywhere, but we also have not, one of the main problems is like being able to keep a co a cohesive like thought process through the organization, which is just difficult in any organization. Um, but we're we're working on it, and I see us moving towards being better constantly. So that's not to say anybody's been doing a poor job at all. So. Go for it, Seth. Yeah. Um, so first of all, really cool to see um, that source cred is uh, on the 2023 roadmap, and that uh, and that you're uh, you're planning to continue using it. 
Uh, I um, have, have recently recommitted to working on SourceCred and uh, will definitely be around. Also, um, I've been talking with the main developer on SourceCred right now who uh, is interested in uh, basically quitting his, his Web2 job and just working on SourceCred potentially. And so uh, uh, just kind of like putting feelers out there to see what interest there might be in um, uh, you know, an org that wants to uh, do some development on SourceCred and take the plane up to another level, if you will. Um, <clears throat> that's just super initial discussion, but uh, I, I, you know, I wanted to to uh, drop that here first, actually, because it's I've been really impressed by how well SourceCred has been executed here. Uh, like, I, I do think that like it's an example of something that's working and that could be taken to the next level uh, <clears throat> if, if there was organizational uh, uh, desire for that. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, just wanted to put that out there. So in the context of everything that's just been discussed, knowing that you are working on source cred directly, uh, and then he's potentially uh, thinking about, or I, I don't know their gender, um, that they're potentially thinking about uh, exiting their job. Um, this This does seem like a great opportunity to say, we have access to a, a, an outside developer who's worked on and helped build SourceCred, if not built it directly, or the both of them. And then we have access to researchers who, like myself, I'm finishing up my doctorate. Um, so by the time next year rolls around, I'll be a doctor, but then other, bring in other doctors to help guide the research on this. I think that's like, easily we could apply for like a half million dollar grant or more um and have it be something that has a lot of leeway but in the process established like one of the things i really want is to have ethical oversight as as like early on a part of the way scurf operates and we've been really good and nobody's pushed back against that but if we build our own sort of like um irb approval process where we're like we know we're effectively doing human subjects testing but we're doing the least amount of risk possible because the only thing that's really the outcome is people getting paid like nobody's losing anything by participating there's only really the option of people getting paid so there's not really a lot of harm possible um with the understanding that these things need to be studied but they also ha need to be in a place that's like the gap between a complete controlled laboratory and the actual marketplace um and i do feel like scurf is that gap in, in the way that it's sort of evolved uh and i feel like the more we sort of try to build a, a decentralized laboratory culture the more it will evolve in line with the practices that are already that already exist in science but also in the applied science in the market where it's still with the intention of uh executing the goal and not just the pro the pure profit motive which is why i think getting a grant for it puts us in a different position than getting vc or investment dollars like there's a huge difference in grant money versus investment in the traditional sense so that's where i'm like this feels like a great opportunity 
mean, as we roll towards a non-profit status, I think grants of that nature will be more achievable um, because this is what non-profit status uh, provides for you. Uh, that is a very cool little piece of news. Thank you, Seth. Um, along those, well, I don't know about along those lines, um, but like how it is on the 2023 roadmap. Um, in my mind, um, I think, right, I don't want to like over promise, but I think because of the um, budget constrained world that we're in and like what that meant, has meant for personnel and stuff like that, I do think that we are actually looking for some opportunities of how we can increase the budget that this guild gets uh, to play with a little bit uh, to kind of give people more earning potential like right? as uh, as we get more people involved um, i think people are starting to notice that like there was like a peak of if you're doing a great job you're like making decent money but now as more people are coming in we'll start to see like a little bit of a curve off of that so i think that there is um i think there is some interest in potentially thinking of like how we do that um with that i think we definitely then would have to start doing some stuff like um hybrid models like in the payout time scale. So simultaneously, we want to make sure we're retaining and rewarding people long term, uh, but also making sure that people who are making uh, or providing value like in the last month, let's say, uh, that they are particularly benefiting from that. Um, I 100 percent agree that the kind of the time of you just signing up and kind of getting some die like that's probably setting uh, and maybe we can use that return pool to do that a uh, hybrid approach i'm also really interested potentially because right, we've had this kind of conversation in the skill before uh, with like leaderboards and all that type of stuff of uh, the unintended consequence of like competitiveness and i'm kind of interested in exploring like let's just look at raw cred itself like so instead of percentage but like the raw cred score itself and like figuring out if maybe we can just do like some like are there just kind of natural breaks in that data of there's um like you have high performers mid performers low perform like you kind of have these categories and as long as you're kind of maintaining your score um that there's a universal payout for which uh maybe we'll call them low performance we'll go with classic battles gold silver and bronze performers um and like you get like you know we can maybe find where are the cuts in raw score um and then everyone at that score level just kind of gets pad so like that notion of leveling yep uh and so like quests like how do we help people get up there um which i think we have to do then as an organization and as a guild better understand what type of activity like really boosts one's score so um i know i've kind of had some chats with people of hey I, I i worked like really hard this last month and i haven't noticed that big of a an impact i think some of that's because of our return pool um maybe particularly for this month but just in general that that return pool seems to contributing and not contributing has always been like the bigger break uh, as opposed to what your actual raw score is or percentages um but I also just think like we don't have like a very refined understanding of like what like if someone wanted to work really hard to get source cred, I don't know if I don't know if we really know exactly what behavior would do that. And I think we might want to start knowing that so that we could maybe find out what those um, levels are. Yes, Chris. And in the sense of obviously it's not going to be. Um... 100% accurate or anything, but based on the conversations that we had concerning how to adjust the node weight or the edge weights um, and how they're weighted, it feels like to me that it is actually a combination of posting, commenting, and getting liked. It's not just one or any of them that contributes to the overall score and it's like you really do have to have sort of a balanced existence to get source cred like accumulation and that's where there's been times where i'm like more commenting than doing main posts but i'm still ranked as as high as i am so it's like the score is continuing to accumulate and then there's times where i'm getting more likes than posting so my scores continuing to accumulate 
but I do think it's like the way I and I I'll, I'll uh, clarify that I have also been watching other people's behaviors. So like Freaky Tainment, he comments a lot. He doesn't actually start a lot of forum posts, um, but I think his score seems to be relatively high for what I would consider. He's not a newcomer, but he's also not someone who does forum posts. So it's like the fact that he just exists as like a commenter and someone who comes in and likes stuff, he can still get uh, somewhat of a source cred score because his his existence is not just commenting, but he's getting likes and liking things. I'd like to actually make a follow-up observation that ETH might find interesting. And I'm going to bring up the analytics guild from yesterday. And what we see here is the top most viewed pages on Scrifio form according to Google Analytics. And you can see there that Freaky Tainment is actually on that top list. So that's kind of interesting. I don't know really exactly what that means, but you can also see Ulysses there as well. Um, and this is over the last 90 days, yeah. Yeah, Seth. So like um, everything that people uh, are taught, like all the ideas people are bringing up are good and doable. I, 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 I do think that uh, the, 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 like the, how does, it, uh, like that basically um, the only thing I can see sort of blocking um, like these the ideas going forward is gaming. And when I say gaming, I mean that very broadly and not moralistically. Um, <clears throat> uh, you're going to have um, people like Freaky Tainment who are maybe generating a lot of content and, and delivering value. But um, if, they, if they're if they getting paid a lot, um, you know, eventually that'll, that's going to cause problems. Like even if it's just people saying, hey, they're getting paid more than me, you know, they're cred farming. There's going to be, those accusations are going to be there. And like, um, even if I don't think that they're cred farming, even if I think, I think that their like intent is good, they're just creating content, that perception will be there. And if there is a mismatch in between what people think is really valuable and what is the algorithm is finding valuable, then you have to be able to tweak that, right? To better reflect like the community's uh feedback and that needs to be sort of like an iterative process that's kind of continually um you know revisited especially if you increase the payouts then you're gonna really word's gonna word is definitely gonna spread <laughs> and like you're gonna have you're gonna have this issue right so yeah 100 percent agree on that uh, and that to some extent is why i, I really would like to maybe spend some time as a guild um, kind of doing a comparison of uh, qualitatively. Oh, wow, that is such good value creation. Um, and is that getting rewarded uh, by the algorithm or not? So, like, so really understanding um, like much more in-depth understanding about what that where that raw score is kind of coming from. I think I would like us to have that before we kind of take some of these actions because uh, I would love like so especially like members of this guild right members of this guild should be able to if they wanted to game right they should be able to say like how could I start a brand new account at zero and get uh, on the like top five leaderboard uh, within a month or so right like so probably unlikely but like people of this guild should be able to know that and if that ultimately means like you just have to produce phenomenal content every single day success um so i would like a, like if we could kind of figure out how could one go from zero to leaderboard in a month or, or have a better understanding of how one could go from zero to leaderboard in a month and it is that behavior actually the behavior we want to see um then i'd be very happy to 
increase the or see if we can increase our budget if instead it's like oh you just have to like put in time maybe less so so yeah i, I think to me that's one of our next big steps is like really understanding what is um what the algorithm is considering valuable So on, on that note, um, I'm not sure if you realize Taptive encourages using AI assisting, um, which is like, if it's not against the rules, it's within the game. So that's where I think in terms of when we're talking about gaming, if the end result is not plagiarism, but people are using uh, artificial intelligence to assist their writing, so be it who can, i don't actually care personally um if that allows them to produce better they improve the process they're not wasting time that they actually figured out a way to use ai i'm not going to use it but i don't care if they do actually if the, if it this is considered performance enhancing writing let them do it i don't care other people might so this is where i do think it's important that it's the sense of fairness is what should dictate these decisions so i think that's where it's like as long as the community thinks it's fair then whatever uh is and that's where i'm like um personally i just it it's like the sense of fairness is going to be the thing that keeps people around i think go for it seth yeah i think that that's right on um uh like uh, i also think that you know like a person using ai um can be could, can be can be fine can be really can be act maybe that's actually uh the best thing but if someone starts creating like tons of content and therefore that overshadows every all the human created posts right all of a sudden everyone else who's not using ai doesn't get any attention they think it's unfair and that's like totally legitimate too right and i think that speaks to a couple uh larger issues one of them is like governance i guess or determining what is fair uh, you could call that just consensus building or something else too, but right, you have to you have to agree on what's fair and translate that into policy algorithm changes, whatever. Um, it also taps into the other big sort of issue that I was I wanted to touch on, which is UI generally. Um, you know, like uh you know for instance like if you could somehow like filter out ai created content so that it doesn't consume all the attention uh that you know that could that could make that problem go away um but that's like a whole project with that would require engineering work right um and then also you know um how do you display the scores to the community generally uh, right now, we're like basically not doing that. It seems like, um, <clears throat> and like um, that's fine. But I imagine it, it at some point will be useful. Whether that's just like in Guild Report with like cool data visualizations, or like a you know a, like a published leaderboard of some kind. Uh, you know, eventually, I like I think you do want that feedback loop where people can see scores, adjust their behavior. Uh, and like, uh, you know, because I think that that, that like increased visibility will like, will be good for engagement, um, you know, uh, and like also be a positive, as long as the algorithm's like working in a fair way, it'll be like a good feedback mechanism for writers as well to like, so that like help them improve. Right. All right. I'm done rambling. Uh, thanks. I just wanted to mention in the link in the, uh, message there scurfile forge slash source cred we do maintain the um at the bottom a table list of the each monthly 
cred percent. So we we do have that as far like that's the closest we have to like you know actually having a leaderboard or whatever. Cool. All right. Well, we are at four minutes to go. This has been a packed hour. Um, yeah. So I just thank you everybody for coming out here and sharing your thoughts and your time. Um, if there aren't any closing thoughts, that's probably a good spot to wrap it up. So yeah, exciting times. Thanks for thanks again. I guess we'll just yeah. yeah. All right, well then, be well. Thank you for all those thoughts, and I'm looking forward to a guild report. Uh, which, if anyone has a cooler name for a report than a report, um, let me know because, <laughs> like, we're not a committee; we're a guild, uh, and maybe we don't make reports because that sounds boring. I'll have to think about like how to game. Like, maybe there's some video yes. game terminology <laughs> from an MMORPG. Yeah, of some guild you know... scrolls. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we got a we got a min max for our big raid next week. You know, I don't yeah. know how do we translate that into. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you, everybody. All right, everybody. Bye.